And I agree. I do not think it's beyond uh, this administrative state and their deep state apparatus to, to actually try to uh, work on the assassination of President Trump. I, I, think, I think everything's on the table. If Republican gets in, investigate everybody. Raid everybody. Use all of it. I don't care if we become Nicaragua at this point. You've already rung the bell. You can't unring it, buttercup. This is a wake-up call for those in Congress to be able to use the tools at their disposal to defund the FBI, to ask the right questions, and to prepare for a church-style commission next year, if given a Republican majority, to dismantle the FBI into a thousand bits. When we get power back, it's time to hold everyone accountable. The military leadership, the civilian leadership, the civil surface, those in Congress who've abused their power, all of them have to be held accountable. All of them. It can't be this nice guy routine where Justice. we're just, oh, let's be friends. And going back to Hillary, there's a whole lot of other things. How about the Benghazi scandals? How about the Clinton Foundation? I mean, how many, you know, shady oligarchs from Russia were contributing to that? Look about, how about Uranium One? Look at Hillary Clinton, the 33,000 emails that she just deletes. Hey, liberals, you think they're not going to come for you? So if the FBI can do this to President Donald Trump, they can do it to you. The left thinks this is hilarious. If you doubt me, just go to any of their goofy platforms, Twitter or elsewhere right now. They think this is hilarious. Oh, you have no idea, Dan Bongino. You have no idea. So that was just a small compilation of what I thought were the funniest meltdowns from MAGA world following news that Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago was raided. And what's funny about this is Trump's sycophants, they believe that he's actually above the law or that he should be above the law. Therefore, for him to face accountability, even the mere prospect of him facing accountability to them is deeply, deeply angering. And you saw the arguments that they used. I mean, this isn't necessarily an innovative argument. They're giving us no reasons as to why Trump shouldn't be held accountable for potential criminality. They claim, oh, well, what about Benghazi? What about Hillary Clinton? What about Hunter Biden? Look, if we're pretending as if this is some sort of a hostage exchange, we'll give you Hillary Clinton and Hunter Biden in exchange for Donald Trump. They can all share a jail cell. I, I I genuinely don't care. That, to me, as a leftist, that's not very persuasive. Another thing that they say is, well, you know, imagine what they can do to you if they're doing this to a president. Normal Americans are jailed every single day for doing lesser crimes than Trump possibly committed. So, that's not actually a very good argument. And now what they're trying to do is they're trying to weaponize the legal system against their political opponents as they scream about how the Democratic Party currently is trying to weaponize the political system against their political opponents. Now, what I find fascinating about this particular argument is that they're pretending as if this is a new objective for them. When they've been talking about doing investigations of Democrats since Biden was elected back in April, they were talking about their intent to start impeachment proceedings for Joe Biden. So in response to that, I say, bring it on. The threat of you doing what you're already going to do shouldn't stop this investigation into Donald Trump. Now, I have more reactions to share with you, but first, let's get to some facts with regard to this story. The New York Times reports, former President Donald J. Trump said on Monday that the FBI had searched his Palm Beach, Florida home and had broken open a safe, an account signaling a major escalation in the various investigations into the final stages of his presidency. The search, according to multiple people familiar with the investigation, appeared to be focused on material that Mr. Trump had brought with him to Mar-a-Lago, his private club and residence, when he left the White House. Those boxes contained many pages of classified documents according to a person familiar with their contents. Now, to be very clear, this does not confirm that Donald Trump has committed a crime. Did he likely commit a crime? Yeah, that's my opinion. But what this does indeed confirm is that a judge was convinced that there was probable cause that a crime had been committed, which is why this warrant was issued, and that is very, very serious. Now, since we learned about his raid yesterday, it got even worse for Donald Trump because a federal appeals court held that the IRS must turn over Trump's tax documents, something that he's been trying to not do for a very long time now. And in the event he's convicted of taking or destroying government records, he could be barred from holding a public office again. Now, whether or not this raid ultimately culminates in him being barred from public office or facing a day in jail, We'll have to wait and see. I'm not necessarily that optimistic about this, but still the shitstorm that ensued after this took place was uh, really delightful to see. Now, for the Republicans watching this, 
who are going to claim that this is nothing more than a partisan witch hunt, well, need I remind you, as Sawyer Hackett does, that the director of the FBI who approved the raid on Trump's home was actually appointed than none other by President Donald Trump five years ago this week. So you don't get to claim that this is some sort of a partisan witch hunt. The FBI had probable cause and they presented this case to a judge and the judge did agree with them and granted them the warrant. That's how the legal system works. I know that it's a little bit shocking that an elite, that a former public official with that much power is possibly being held at least minimally accountable with this raid. But that's how it's supposed to work. This is what happens when justice is actually equally applied and not just used against peasants who commit crimes. Now, we've seen some of the reactions from MAGA World, but I want to get some more reactions because to say that it was unhinged would be the understatement of the century because they are freaking the fuck out. And it's, just, it's so, so funny. Their responses are not just ironic and hypocritical, but they're hilarious. So GOP leader Kevin McCarthy tweets, I've seen enough. The Department of Justice has reached an intolerable state of weaponized politicization. Rich coming from him. Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. Now, this is Republicans, again, doing what they claim Democrats are doing, weaponizing our legal system to take down political opponents. But this isn't some sort of a partisan witch hunt. There's evidence that Trump broke the law, and as Nabila Islam puts it, when equal treatment feels like oppression. Exactly. Texas GOP tweeted out, Biden has crossed the Rubicon. If there was any doubt remaining, we are now living in a post-constitutional America where the Justice Department has been weaponized against political threats to the regime. It's an administration, not a regime. That's not what that word means. Uh, as it would in a banana republic. It won't stop with Trump. You are next. Organized force birther and theocrat Abby Johnson tweeted, if the FBI can go after a president, they can come after any of us. Yeah, that's how the law is supposed to work. Charlie Kirk writes, America is devolving into a third world nation, not because of Trump, and this latest escalation by Merrick Garland and the Biden regime, again, it's an administration, not a regime, that's not what that word means, Jesus Christ, should shock every single American regardless of who you voted for in 2020. Wow. Probably my favorite cope here, Candace Owens writes, the FBI must be legally and formally dissolved. What happened to President Trump is positively stunning and a mark of unchecked government power. I no longer recognize the country I live in. Left or right, we must all come together to fight this evil. Now, let's just pause here. Now, this is a turning point for her. She wants to come together with the left. Hmm. Where were you during the uh, January 6th insurrection or during November and December of 2020 when Trump was repeatedly lying about the election? You were telling the left to fuck off. And now when somebody who potentially committed crimes is possibly going to be held accountable, now you want to come together and unite with the left. Go fuck yourself, Candace Owens. And I love the way that they're flipping. These folks were all back to blue. They were, you know, wanting all of us to thank and suck off a brave hero in uniform whenever we came across them on the streets. But now all of a sudden, they've gone full abolitionist because the FBI dared to hold Donald Trump minimally accountable with this raid. It doesn't even mean he's going to go to jail. We don't even know what's going to come of this. But just to have him raided in and of itself is the greatest injustice they've ever experienced. This is their January 6th. And, and this is just so hilarious. Journalist Ken Klippenstein shared Marjorie's response, which was defund the FBI hilarious coming from her considering when you look at her previous statements she tweeted out we should back the blue now not so much sarah huckabee sanders tweeted out if you're not yet appalled by the total abuse of power from democrats in washington you're not paying attention but as brian tyler cohen points out this is what she said about hillary clinton in 2016 when you're attacking fbi agents because you're under investigation you're losing now last but not least not necessarily within the maga world andrew yang weighed in saying i'm no trump fan i I want him as far away from the White House as possible, but a fundamental part of his appeal has been that it's him against a corrupt government establishment. This raid strengthens that case for millions of Americans who will see this as unjust persecution. So in other words, because lots of Americans, specifically Trump sycophants, are stupid and uninformed, and this will further play into their victim complex, we shouldn't do anything about Trump's potential crimes. We should just let him get away with breaking the law when we punish normal Americans every single single day for potentially doing less than Trump did. I mean, let's remember this individual tried to stage a coup and stay in power illegally and unconstitutionally, but you're saying for political purposes, we should just not do anything about his criminality. Um, no, 
I don't think that we should do that. In fact, I want to share a tweet that is very poignant given this particular moment that I agree with. This is from Donald J. Trump, who writes, law and order. Yeah, I agree with that. We need law and order. And do you want to know what that means? That means that when elites break the laws, just like peasants, they're also held accountable. But they just can't grapple with the prospect of their deity being held accountable. And again, I have to state this again, this might not even lead to anything. There's just evidence, there's probable cause that a crime was committed, but we don't necessarily know if Trump will be held legally accountable. We just know that they are creating a case against him. And is it serious? Absolutely. But still, I mean, if you're going to cry for Donald Trump, do you cry for the people who are incarcerated for dumb things, smoking pot, selling pot, doing minor offenses where they face years in jail, years in prison, rather? Like, are you going to shed tears for them or just elites when they're the ones who are being held accountable? I think you all know the answer to that question. So, yeah, I love this. Um, to see this massive meltdown just based on Trump being raided by the FBI, I can only imagine what it'd be like if Trump were to go to jail. The meltdown would be so delicious that we might all overdose on... Um, joy because it's it, it would be that much of a fucking shitstorm if you see what they're you know you know the way that they're reacting now so either way trump was raided by the fbi and i am watching delightfully and hoping that more comes of this because um unlike these conservative hypocrites i actually believe that elites should be held accountable i don't care if that means democrats i don't care if that means republicans if you want to prosecute hunter biden have at it i don't care because i'm consistent if you break the law you should go to jail that's something that we should apply universally, not just to poor people. So, yeah, there you have it. It's just, it's interesting. One last thing I'll say about this. It's interesting the way that they will completely flip their political views like that in a moment's notice to go from backing the blue to becoming abolitionists. That really says something about the right, doesn't it? Because these folks, they have no core, consistent set of principles or beliefs. They just speak whatever is on their mind and so if temporarily it benefits them to you know be against the blue and become fbi abolitionists then they'll do that but if it behooves them to back the blue if it means taking down the left and left wingers who protest then they'll do that too so it's a really interesting moment and i would really you know um emphasize the need to pay attention to this because this is how they expose themselves by showing how nakedly hypocritical they are and how they're willing to change their entire worldview when it benefits them. Love to see this. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.